Yeah. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Foundry Finishing Solutions webinar. My name is Scott Shaver from Equipment Manufacturers International, or EMI. Along with us from CIF are Thomas Gerst and Cyril Jago. He goes by CJ for short. As CJ mentioned, a few housekeeping items. Please make sure your microphone and your camera are turned off. Hold any questions you have until the end. You can let us know that you have a question by clicking on the reactions button at the top of the screen and then raising your or clicking on the yellow hand. I'll, I'll run through today's agenda very quickly to allow as much time for the SIF presentation. I'll provide a quick reminder about EMI products, services, and our capabilities. The SIF team will present their company details, discuss tailor-made solutions, introduce you to a number of unique innovations and services, introduce you to their standard robotic cell lineup, show you a cell demonstration, and wrap up with question and answer session. EMI and SIF have joined forces in the U.S. and Canadian foundry market since July 2020. EMI is the U.S. and Canadian distributor for SIF products. We support our customers with application engineering, stocking certain common spare parts, and providing after-sale support and services. This is our 40th year serving the foundry industry. The areas of the foundry that we focus on include mold making machinery, including automatic match plate mold machines, high pressure tight flask mold lines, manual jolt squeeze and rotolift machines, mold handling solutions for any of our mold machines and competitive mold machines, and also for no bake mold handling. We offer new and remanufactured equipment options. Core making, we provide all core making process equipment, which includes cold box, shell, hot box, vertical and horizontally parted tooling, complete core room design, turnkey installation services, and we also offer new and remanufactured equipment options here as well. Engineering services including foundry layout and equipment studies, project scope and budgeting, process optimization assessments, and mold and core making automation solutions. During our 40 year history, we've acquired these foundry industry brands and continue to support these machines with new and remanufactured equipment, replacement parts and service. More, most recently, we've made an investment in Savelli and are the exclusive partners for Savelli high pressure tight flask mold lines and green sand preparation plants. EMI operates out of our out of Cleveland, Ohio, where we have our 65,000 square foot manufacturing facility. And with that, I'd like to turn the balance of the webinar over to CJ. All right, so thank you. Thank you, Scott, for this introduction on, on EMI capabilities. Uh, now, Mr. Gerst and myself, Mr. Rigo, will introduce uh, CIF with a short history of the company, key figures and our capabilities. So thank you for joining this meeting and uh, thank you to all of the <clears throat> of your uh, intention to join our community, some the SIF community for robotic finishing. And uh, let's go through the different possibilities that we can provide you worldwide and with on behalf in the US, of course, of EMI. Thank you. And now I give over the words to CJ. Thank you. So just for a quick review, SIF is located in the western part of France, uh, just a couple of hours from Paris by train, so just one pound away from you. Um, here are the key figures of the, the company. Um, it was founded, established in 2008, but we have an experience of 35 years in the foundry finishing industry because the company was formerly known as SERF, spelled S-E-R-F which was well implanted in the North American market. Here are our representation from North America to Asia and of course Europe. CIF has representation uh, with technicals and sales offices and representatives. 
As you can see, we currently have a technical office in Saltillo, North Mexico. And during the fourth quarter of 2023, we'll be opening a new office for Scandinavian countries. All these representations CIF, uh, of CIF uh, helps us reach 70% uh, of the turnover of the company at export sales. And here are a few examples of our historic customer. Uh, you can see all the big names of the North American foundries, as well as international companies such as Delantis, Nissan, Scania, and so on and so on. Through all the steps of the foundry process, here are the ones where CIF comes into play. We are involved in the robotic core assembly and also on, on every step from right after the molding down to just before the machining. Uh, in cooling, we take part mostly for high production volume for aluminium castings, uh, decoring with uh, vibra vibrating and hammering solutions for cores knockout, finishing that we'll, we, we will develop today during the presentation. Also, industrial vision systems that we will discuss today, uh, control and inspection that we can integrate in our lines, such as ultrasonic, X-rays and so on, and pre-machining, which is typically used on engine block lines. And for the focus of the today's presentation on finishing, we have the solutions of robotic cells, uh, trimming machines, oh, and, and specific yeah. trimming tools. Um, okay, on, on your request, we'll be able to send you data on any of these operations that we have a, a role in. So what are the advantages of a robotic deburring cell? Uh, first of all, increased productivity compared to manual deburring because depending on the casting, cycle times can be divided by two or even three or even more when it comes to trimming machines. Also, the repeatability of finishing quality, meaning that any new operator, skilled or not, uh, with a basic training is able to operate the cell and produce castings of constant finishing quality. We also help reducing the tediousness of deburring operations and thus reducing the risk of injuries and preventing outputs and qualities that are dependent on operator skills and most of possible human mistakes in general. It also provides um, automated and safe deburring equipment uh, because we all know that it is a dangerous and difficult operation, the manual deburring, the foundry industry needs for automated finishing solutions has grown bigger and bigger over the last 10 years and even more since the pandemic and the big quit. For these reasons, uh, finding operators uh, that are willing to do the deburring work is harder than ever. The noise reduction on dust containment is also a great improvement uh, from manual deburring uh, since it benefits the health and safety regulations and also the employer's, employee's work environment, reducing turnover. And finally, um, a wider range of use compared to CNC deburring, which is to us an improvement that is the future of foundry finishing, having robotic solutions and also more flexible because CIF cells are able to treat all types of castings and shapes up to 15 metric tons. Small and medium castings are handled by the robot, just like a, hu a human would, but with payloads of up to 400 pounds. And all that leads to a typical ROI of 12 to 18 months compared to manual deburring, not mentioning the time spent today by your supervisors and HR teams finding and training new operators frequently. Now, the first question we often get is what type of cell will fit my castings? So how does SIF design a cell to do the finishing job of your castings? First of all, we have to consider the casting type and weight. It will tell us if we go, if we go for a tool handle or a casting handle solution, if we have very small casting, numerous casting, very large casting, iron, aluminium, non-ferrous, and so on. All these comes into play. The material and the production output 
will lead us to the type of tools we use and the environment will help us decide uh, the loading and unloading solutions. So first of all, the first step is to design the operator loading and unloading area. Uh, for castings under 1100 pounds, we can use uh, an electrical rotative table with a manual mechanical indexer, sorry, with or without fixtures, or for more flexible input, a belt conveyor that also allows you to create a buffer. And for larger castings, such as these earth-moving vehicle parts uh, in Canada, we use larger rotative tables uh, equipped with a satellite that we'll be able to see on videos later on. And in specific applications, like this engine block in the South African foundry, we can also insta install cleated conveyors with fixtures. And finally, for uh, tailor-made rotative stations for very heavy casting, such as these forklift counterweights in a Polish foundry. To choose the robot, we generally choose the most adapted robot to work in the cell. Uh, from our experience, we can integrate the most popular robot manufacturers, such as Fennec, ABBs, KUKAS. Uh, for the past few years, we've installed a greater number of ABB robots, thanks to our long-term partnership and also their numerous training centers around the globe. Uh, we keep a stock of the most frequently used robots, of the most frequently used robots in stock in our facility. Depending on the costing and the work to be done, we select the ideal handling solution, grippers, and tools. As you can see, generally speaking, castings are under 400 pounds are casting handled, and for casting over, we go for a tool handled solution. Uh, we will see in this uh, video uh, different cutting applications uh, with various materials. So here it's the riser removal from cast iron castings. And we see the collection of scrap on the scrap conveyor. Here is the use of a tool handle double shaft sift spindle of 30 kilowatts. Here it's the riser cutting from aluminum calipers with a fixed station. And here an example of steel riser cutting and feeding system cutting for heat treatment crates. Now for grinding applications uh, in cast iron castings, here are a few examples of fine grinding with a pencil grinder. Here is the use of a 20 inch diameter diamond wheel. And here is an example of a tool handled solution with double spindle. And here another example of fine grinding on cast iron castings. And here is a special application we've developed for motor blocks with two robots working at the same time. Another solution that we've developed is sanding for cast iron, aluminum and generally non-ferrous castings. And you'll be able to see how smoothly we can reproduce the move of a human hand, but indeed, in this case, the casting is up to 200 pounds. Here is the application for aluminum sanding. We see that the flexibility of the belt grinding uh, allows to compensate the casting variations and giving a clean and smooth finish. Here an example with sanding. And we'll be, we'll be able to see the results of this belt grinding as you can see on that count, uh, fault lift counterweights, the customer was expecting a body shop finish that we, are, we were able to reach with the belt grinder. Here is an example of a milling application with a sift spindle. In that case, an aluminum casting for uh, heavy duty trucks. We'll see that the milling can be done with only one spindle all the meaning on that side of the, the casting is done by only one spindle with pretty good fitting, fitting speed and it resulting in a very interesting cycle time. And after we have designed the tools, the robot and the input system, we design the overall uh, enclosure of the system. For tailor-made design, we 
result in a safe and closed environment. Coming to SIF innovations, first of all, is the vision system dedicated to foundries. So SIF develops and has a proprietary software for 2Ds and 3Ds applications specific for foundries uh, that we use for uh, casting identification as we're able to see on the video at the same time. It allows us to do casting locations on the conveyor and pick up from the conveyor without any fixtures. Then we do a rec recalibration of the trajectories after pickup and we can start the grinding cycle adapted to each casting. In that second application we see the use of a 2D vision system for sorting out uh, castings from a conveyor using magnetic grippers. We are also able to do the palletizing thanks to the vision. And last example is picking up directly from crates with the 3D vision system and a magnetic gripper in that case. The vision system can also be used for quality control. Another innovation from SIF is the integration of compliance. Uh, take a closer look at, at the, uh, the position of the wheel. You will be able to see the movement from the compliance here. This allows us to speed up the grinding operations, even with irregular burr sizes, and it also prevents damage on the rubber, the tool, or the casting. Uh, the automatic tool changer. Uh, the automatic tool change means that the operator doesn't have to enter the cell, to change the tools and also the spindles can be prepared in advance or in mass time. The results are shorter cycle times and greater overall efficiency. And the final innovation that we present today is the offline programming. Um, a 3D simulation is done before the trials are run. Uh, it allows us to prepare 90% of the trajectories offline and just implement it into the cell for final touches. So as you can see, the operator has the ability to simulate the, the trajectories. And you see at the same time here, the trial and the simulation on the side. And we are also showing the use of a satellite table here, which allows us to do the grinding all around the casting. And for SIF services provided by SIF are three trainings with, that are included with every cell. Um, an operator training for daily use of the machine, a robotic and automation training for integration of new castings, and a maintenance training for preventive and general maintenance of the cell. The main goal for the customer is to get used to the machine, and with the training provided, he should be able to run new casting in the cell without having to ask for SIF support. Yet, with the offline programming, SIF can remotely help and assist the customer to integrate new casting if needed in the cell. And also, note that more than 90% of the troubleshooting we do is done remotely, and we do that with the help of the integrated camera in the cell. We will today introduce you three cells with different architectures, so you have an idea of the range. Uh, first of all, we will start with the EVO 80. So the EVO, in a sense, is an evolution of an eco cell the eco cell being the one that we'll uh, have a demo of later on in the presentation. Uh, the Flex 120, which is casting handle handling cell, uh, capable to treat many castings and shapes and size. And the AV6300 uh, for very large and heavy castings. And as you can see, we have heavy 15 tons for the very, very large castings. So here is the EVO 80, and at the same time, you have a view of our headquarters. So the 80 stands for 80 kilos, meaning that this, the casting handled in that cell are weighing up to 176 pounds. All that in a contained environment. 
with the use of vision, you see that no fixtures are needed for casting input. And the vision just does its job of identification of the casting and pickup and recalibrating as we saw earlier. At the same time, you are able to see the software that we use for recalibrating and then the finishing cycle starts. In that case, cast iron frames for manhole covers. We see here the layout of the cell, which has two spindles and one in the middle for fine grinding, one spindle for cutting, one for large grinding, and the thir third one for fine grinding inside of small holes. And we simply drop back the casting on the table and you are able to see now that a new shape of casting, a new type of casting is loaded in the cell without any change and the vision is able to cope with that since the program is already in the machine. And there is no human mistake possible at the input because the camera makes sure that the casting is identified. And the cycle starts again. Now coming to the Flex 120. This one is a very good example for casting such as municipal equipment, uh, large valves, and pump bodies. The difference uh, on the outside of this cell is having two conveyors for casting input and output. We, we are still using a three division system to pick up the castings from the conveyor. And after recalibrating, as you see here, the, cycle, the grinding cycle starts. At the same time, you see the interest of having a camera inside of the cell. Uh, th this is the, the footage from the SIF control and survey camera from the cell. This allows us to do troubleshooting and also have a record and stored data from the camera. This cell is equipped with automated cripple changer, allowing us to run a new type of casting without entering the cell. And we can also use the vision to make sure that the gripper is the correct one. So as we presented it, this is a cell, as its name stands, flex, it's very flexible. It's able to cope with many sizes and shapes of castings just by changing the gripper thanks to the conveyors at the input. And also you can create a buffer. And finally, on the standard range of, uh, of stiff cells, uh, the heavy range for larger castings, in that, in that case the, cast, the tool comes to the casting instead of picking up the casting. 6300 is for 6300 kilos, so that's almost 40,000 pounds, 14,000 pounds. So in that example, a counterweight for earth moving equipment. The measurements is integrated on the robot, so we can adapt the trajectories to each casting once again. And we have a vertical storage for different type of tools, for grinding, cutting, and so on. So this cell is fully independent in terms of cycle, grinding cycle. And in that, in that particular example, the casting that used to take uh, one operator a full day to finish, uh, the customer is now able to treat one casting each hour. So the highlights of the uh, SIF uh, finishing cells from eco to heavy are they are aiming at small and medium production batches with high flexibility as you can see more than 250 campaigns are possible 
uh, also aiming at efficiency and short payback for the customer with uh, the help of safe training and support that we described and also the offline programming for new casting campaigns integration. Now we will focus on uh, the eco cell, which is our based and pre-designed range of cells, like with the one we have behind us. Um, here is the sum up of what you will find in the base eco 40 cell for cast iron castings. So first of all, what you will find on the cell is a rotative table of 63 inches in diameters for casting input. An ABB robot with a payload of 150 kilos with a pneumatic gripper. All that included in a soundproof cabin of a contained size and an electrical cabinet with display HMI PLC and a dual safety switches. The tool wall is equipped with one uh, safe grinding spindle of 22 kilowatts with a diamond grinding disc of 20 inches. The second spindle is equi equipped with a disc of 19 inches in diameter and two scrap bins for uh, scrap collection. And for the aluminum version, aluminum and non-ferrous version of that cell, the base is pretty much the same, the same robot and rotative table and cabin. What changes is, of course, the tooling with cut cutting disc of 16 inches in diameter and a small milling spindle uh, that goes up to 6,000 RPMs for cutting. And we find, again, the collecting bins for scrap. An optional is a belt grinder that with a motor of 15 kilowatts on the sanding belt of 8 inches in width, which allows us to improve the finishing quality and the smoothness of the casting as we saw on the video earlier. The video you are now about to see is the simulation that we created before running the demo, uh, the demonstration cycle in the cell. So as you can see, we simulate the movement, the picking up, the cutting of the risers and so on. Uh, this allows us to control all the trajectories offline without moving the cell to make sure that there are no collision and we also have a pretty good feedback on what the cycle time will be. Well, this allows us to make sure that everything is okay before running the casting in the cell. And all these trajectories and simulations can be prepared offline, as we said, meaning that if your operators are not comfort comfortable with a new casting or if you want us to support you for new casting integration, we can prepare these kind of trajectories at SIF and then ship them to you so you can integrate them in the set. And now is the actual demonstration of the cell uh, with the same casting cycle as you just saw and presented by myself. We are now in the safe showroom with the eco cell we have in our facility right now. Uh, we are going to present its main features and specifications. We start here with the rotative table for casting input. You can also see the layout of the robot with its casting grippers, pneumatic grippers. And in the back, you can see the spindles and the collecting bins for the scrap. Here is the electrical cabinet with the main switch and the HMI for the operator. The HMI allows him to access all the program inside the system or also have the feedback of the messages. The double hand command allows the operator to launch the cycle after loading the casting on the rotative table here. We also have the direct feedback from the system with the screen right here. And we also see the 3D simulations we've run in our design office for the system on Robot Studio. Here is the robot controller and the robot teach pendant, which allows us to modify the trajectories and move the robot manually. This is the main 
automatic panel for maintenance and here is the safety lock for entering the set. Now, inside of the cell we can see the grinding and cutting spindles. Those two are the ones that come as standard with the robotic cell. These are 22 kW spindles equipped with diamond-coated cutting and grinding wheel. The third one is the optional extra use, in that case for fine grinding. We can also see the two collecting bins for scraps and dust. On the top here, we see the security camera that we install in every SIF cell. The robot, as we speak earlier, is the 235 kg robot equipped with the pneumatic gripper for casting picking up. And here is the rotative table on the robot side with the fixtures. Now we are going to present a simulation of a finishing cycle time with these cast iron casting. So the operator starts the machine from here, from the HMI, put it in auto mode and press cycle start. We are able to see now the rotation of the table and then we'll see the movement of the robot for the grinding cycle. You can see at the same time the feedback live from the camera and we are going to see now the robot in movement. Alright, so now finally we just have to thank you for attending this presentation. Uh, my colleague Thomas just wanted to point out uh, details about the robotic finishing solutions and why SIF sells. Yes, thank you for the, for the patience and <laughs> for the attention to the different slides and different videos. And you have seen that uh, SIF has concentrated uh, completely on the finishing by robotics. Um, and these robots are used because in the, since we have worked already with robots for manipulation, for every, <clears throat> for handling, automation globally and so on. So 20, more than 20 years ago, we already started the work with finishing directly by robots. May it be tool handled, casting handled, as you have seen in the different positions. Because we have seen that this will be the future for the finishing itself, for the simple reason that uh, robots are simulating human movements, so are able to grip, to pick, and to load in a different way than other machines can do, so that there is a much higher flexibility in the finishing result and the finishing possibilities of robotics, the sort of robotic solution. So we concentrated in this area, and as you have seen, developed along the time many different features and, of course, can highlight in this the different control systems, the different uh, survey systems, like the 3D, 2D vision system, where we invest a lot of time and a lot, a lot of development in, in order to simplify the work for the operator. And comes uh, at the end also the internal camera, which gives the best possible diagnostic system for remote control where we are able to today uh, fix between 90-95% of all questions that come up during the operation. So this is why we are in the possibility today to go directly in robotics with all our answers to finishing requests mm -hmm. due to the robotics high flexibility, all possible movements, all possible buffer uh, loading, unloading concepts are integrated because the robot is doing them by himself already. So, at the end of the day, what is the result? A simple, flexible, low cost, because it's 
It's a not costly installation and compact, quick solution for your finishing result in all the different sizes and all the different alloys. So thank you again and I hope that we will see you very soon, whether on our website, on the different events where we will be present, or even on, on the phone by mail with Scott Shaver, with CJ or myself, you are welcome. Thank you and please, if you have questions, do it now. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is uh, uh, Dan Opie from um, Sandcast in Wishartan, Ohio. Can you explain more about compliance in your presentation? What is compliance? Yes, mm -hmm. of course. Um, the compliance we use and that you have seen in the video is um, the cooperation of uh, different um, movements and forces where we use, for instance, in this in this type of electropneumatic uh, movements that are directly linked to the robot controller so that we can adjust the feeding speed, the movement of the robot, and with this avoid damage on casting robot and on the tool itself. So if you want, it's, a, it's really, others call it force control, but we have ded dedicated more to the movement control and to the shape control so that we have an avoiding movement of the tool towards the casting and the robot movement, what allows us to adapt all the different parameters of the robot to the casting shape and come back to the normal movement once we are again in the normal position that is expected. Okay, th thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, I had a feeling that's what it was, and, and I appreciate. Can you also you. can you also describe what type of um, programming skills we need in the foundry? I mean, most foundries don't have programming applications, so this is new. Yeah, how much right. how much programming do we need to have on site in order to use your your robots? In fact, the, what we have uh, as an experience is clearly that the programming knowledge at the beginning is not very high. <clears throat> Necessary is not very high because the um, the use of the cells is uh, very simple, simplified with the training that we dispense directly when the cell is uh, commissioned. We can initiate already the persons. What is always a simpler situation, of course, is when there is um, a short reintroduction to the robotic system at the beginning as in all the systems. You will not drive a car without having license or having known a car before. So it's very, a very light knowledge and afterwards for the new casting introduction you need only some knowledge of the trained, from us trained uh, software for the offline programming in order to win the time and not to lose the efficiency of the cell by programming directly inside. So, you don't need a lot of skills. Okay. Um, and then maybe one last question for me. Down the road, if we want to have a vision to, for bin picking, to take the castings out of the bin <clears throat> and put them on the conveyor or the turntable, is it possible to have a third party uh, system adapt or hook up to your machine for grinding so it's seamless? I mean, do you have open architecture, I guess? Uh, so you mean that there is already a camera existing, um, a depalletizing system already existing that can adapt directly to the cell? Uh, we don't have that yet, but that's something we would like to add sometime mm. down the road, maybe in a couple years or something. Okay, yeah, in any way, all, all, even our systems today can do that directly because we have cells where we integrate not only the vision system itself, but vision system including depalletizing and repalletizing after finishing. So, um, means that you don't load on a turntable or on a belt, but you integrate directly the, the bin with its castings inside. The, the system is depalletizing directly and afterwards makes the finishing and repalletizes directly in the next bin, which is empty. So that you just have to load and unload 
full and empty bins. So this is already oh. existing today and uh, it's running in several foundries. Okay. W with your programs, is it possible, because we have a family of parts <clears throat> that it's the same casting, but it's just a little bit bigger diameter, a little bit thinner, whatever. Is it possible to have one program and I just put in some offsets for the different sizes, or do I need a complete program for each part? Um, yeah, it's in, it's possible. It's possible to do like like that, and it's just a pre-introduction, and then it can be done directly. Yes. And the good thing is, if you have one casting that's similar to others but with minor vari variations, as you mentioned. The good thing is that we can train your people, your operators, on one of these castings and they can reproduce the trajectories and the <laughs> program to the new casting because they, they have the same architecture of the casting. So they will have a sense of what has to be done in the program and train on the new ones On your people will be getting better and better at using the program. And the idea is that the people should be able to run new castings program all by themselves and as we said we are here to support if the need is here okay, um, okay. Yeah. And, and for programming new robots do I have to uh, do it all offline or can I put the robot in I don't know free 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 mode I don't know what else to call it and I can manually guide the robot around the part to yeah. You can to help program that. better? Yeah, yeah. That you can also do, of course. Yes. Yeah, it's a point by point this teach, is, uh, teach application. Yeah. So this is this is the the standard and basic version of the robot programming when you do the trajectories manually around the casting. And uh, we added this offline features also in order to win time by doing this program in the cell and to avoid loss of efficiency and production. Okay. And now I, I right. will just uh, answer questions that are coming from the chat. Uh, one pretty quick will be from Aaron Sloan. Uh, I would like to know if you are using Robot Studio as your main programming software for your robots. The answer is yes, of course, for ABB robots. Uh, we are able to provide a license to the software with the training package from SIF, with the robots, with the cell. So yes, for ABBs that will be Robot Studio, and for FANUC uh, that will be uh, the, the software from FANUC, Robot Guide. And, uh, Robot Guide, and so on. Yeah. So dedicated to the robot, as you mentioned, Robot Studio, hey, it, will be, it, it will be, it uh, will be. Let's see here, a couple of items. Um, the approval that you just, um, <laughs> yeah. So, so um, depending on the robot type, the software will be dedicated, and we provide is a package, in fact, which is the the global software for the establishment of new casting programs, including the three D software for the cell, or and the three D model, the different simulation types, and so on. So, it's a global package that that is provided. Second question from the chat is, uh, does the camera system adjust the system on the fly to adapt to variables of riser height, flashings, parting light variations, and so on, from the standard? Partly. Yes, partly. We can see, for instance, riser positions. We can differentiate them. We can also adjust partly the uh, uh, riser neck size, for instance, and the height, as you as you mentioned, uh, to limit the castings. Yes, we cannot see everything because the time and the calculation time would be too long. Today, that's the limit for us, more or less. But in the in the example of very large castings, such as crane counterweights, we use the three D camera mounted on the robot, and we we do an actual three D scan of the casting for each casting. So. When the time is not a, a limit, we can use the vision system to create a 3D image of the casting. So, another question on visions. Does collision detection terminate the process? Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
we this is part of this collusion uh, of, of our compliance and the collusion and we have a survey also it's even before we have the collusion we have a survey of forces of feeding speed and um, uh, how to say um, rounds per minute so the, the the rounds per minute number is controlled also in order to avoid overload and with this uh, miss work and miss uh, trajectories uh, do you do scott uh, scott shaver would like to maybe close that presentation with a small talk well i'd just like to thank everybody for attending hopefully you uh, came away with some newfound knowledge about uh, robotic finishing um, we'll reach out again we'll email the uh, the link to this recorded webinar so that you can share it to reach out to myself or CJ directly if you have any specific questions. But we thank you again for attending and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody. We also wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's Eve and we will be waiting to see you soon for Foundry Finishing Matters. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you.